Medi swab. <laughs> if you haven't seen them, they're, they're not 100%. What are these? Like 70%, 70% isopropyl. Good enough for Australia. Cleaned up like a ball one. Like there's still some gunk being pushed off those traces there. And once again, the solder mask has worn off of that trace between the pads. But like, I don't. I think that's pretty good. All right, so that is the 50,000 cycle test. And I bet you, when I put this back together, I bet you it measures just fine and dandy. I actually expected more wear than this. Like, I expected, like, contacts to be worn off the PCB and, you know, like, really ground down. The thing with this, right, is that if you want to do this properly, not only do we have to do a contact resistance measurement you do it like an on maybe on an unpopulated board but a production board nonetheless or just cut the traces um but measure all of the contacts on there every single one of them in all the different ranges like because there's multi-point contacts in there it's a multi um gang switch so you've got to measure not only the contact resistance on there but you would uh, do some materials analysis as well just so i've got the second camera running um let me start again uh yeah if you want to do this properly you really have to uh measure the contacts the multiple contacts on every single one of these ranges it's a multi-gang switch so you gotta as you saw the multiple things in there you'd have to cut the traces so there's nothing in parallel you'd have to measure the resistance of each one you'd have to design the jig and really qualify the jig to simulate fingers and then you'd want to rotate the meter in different orientations you know and move it about during the cycle testing and all that sort of stuff so it simulates sort of you know movement plus a hand and everything else and uh, not only that but you want to do material analysis as well so you would um, uh, measure the thickness of the copper and the thickness of the copper and the gold traces on the uh, PCB itself, you can get um, ultra, uh, yeah, are they ultrasonic? Um, yeah, ultrasonic uh, thickness gauges to measure the, however they, however the PCB manufacturers measure the copper thickness. You can actually get quite accurate, um, you know, down to the micron or several tens of micron level or something of the thickness of the copper. So you measure them before, in, including the gold plating on the surface of the switches on the other side, which we can't see. So you would do that uh first before the test and then you do it you know maybe after 10,000 cycles or something like that you might take it apart you do the measurements all again the thickness measurements all again including uh microscope analysis of your contacts as well so and you'd have to do this on multiple meters across you know so that in a you can get some repeatability in the data b that you can use some as sacrificial to like cross section cross section the contacts and things like that so you can look at a side cross sectional profile of how they're wearing down and you know all that sort of stuff and that there's this could take if you were like you know a big ass you know if you were nasa designing this thing or you're you know really serious about doing this sort of stuff then that's what you would do um, you know, you would have you would have material scientists, material engineers analyze the material and all that sort of jazz and do uh, proper, proper metrology measurements of the surface contact uh, surface contact thickness of the range switch plus the contacts and everything else. So what we're doing here is just just a bit how you're doing. You know, it's just uh, for. Well, no, we, like we get some real world data, right? Well, not not real world, but we get some decent data. Anyway, if you want to do it properly, you can get, you do that over 10,000, maybe do it over 50 and then 100. You might get multiple stuff along the way and you don't have to go because it takes time, especially if you're measuring the contact resistance in each one of these positions like this, right? You know, then you'd have to wait for it to settle. You know, move the jig away. You'd probably like the jig would probably come down, move it go out so it didn't put any force on it move it go out like that come back in boop 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 and then after then your contact resistance has to settle and that takes a lot of time somebody commented on this the other night on the uh on the thread here it's probably back in the in the comments on this video that oh you know we bell labs do three million cycles well <laughs> yeah. 
good luck to you. Go try and do 3 million cycles on this and see how long it takes you. So you might do, say, 10,000 cycles. Then, as I said, you get uh, metrology measurements of the, uh, of the thickness of the contacts and all that. And you can calculate how much they're wearing down. And then, you know, if you get some, you know, you might be able to get four or five data points or something. You might see that they're wearing down by 10 microns per 10,000 revolution, per 10,000 cycles or something like that. And then you can, from that, you can, you know, calculate and publish um, a two million cycle lifetime or 100,000 guaranteed at this resistance or something like that. So yeah, it's there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of engineering and science that can go behind testing a range switch like this. It really is quite remarkable if you want to really do it properly, if you want to go to town. So what we're doing here, yeah, a little bit how you're doing, but uh, still we get good data out of it. Like, you know, usable data. We get usable, you know, we didn't, we, we really, I mean, because we're under the pre time pressure here to try and fix this thing before, you know, to get the Kickstarter stuff out and, you know, things like that. So... You know, it's, it's not like we have a month to qualify our test jig, and it's not like we have 20 multimeters to sacrifice um, either. Actual production meters. We've got quite a few here. I've probably got 10... Uh, yeah, I've put those screws in. Yep. 10, 10 meters here. But they're all, like, pre, most of pre-production. We've only got the two, which we've now, both have now been cycled for 50,000 times. So we've got no more virgin meters left to... Oh, I guess I could maybe see if UEI have some. But, uh, yeah, it's not like we had, you know, months to perfect a jig. Because that's what it would take, you know. It would take, a, it'd take it, it could easily take a month. Easily. It's only four weeks, geez, to qualify a rig like this. Gee, it would take months, months and months. Geez, if you did it in a month, you are doing really well. Like, if you are really serious about qualifying something like this. It's a lot of art and science that goes into um, cycle and life cycle testing of components, not only mechanical, but electrical as well. So, you know, especially like if you're getting that dust in there and stuff like that, building up crud and whatnot, it's not good. Happens to all, oh, well, you know, oh, you've got your hermetically sealed ones that are designed for 10 million life cycles and stuff like that. Um, somebody was arguing last night in this um, same thread here that, um, you know, switches should last million, three million cycles or something. Well, I, I actually po uh, posted a link to a DigiKey, you know, I searched for DigiKey parts for rotor encoders, for example, the contact rotor encoders. They actually, they're not optical encoders. They're not the optical ones. They're the ones with the wiping contacts. And you go pull, you know, from any of the big manufacturers, C and K, Panasonic, all those sort of ones, CUI, um, they've all got, if you look at the data sheets, um, there's a good lot of them, there are some in the millions, but a good lot of the majority ones, even ones costing like five bucks a pop, will only have like 30, 50,000 cycles, tops, guaranteed, right, before they're out, those, you know, the rotor encoders that you spin all the time, which will get much less use than a, a multimeter switch, for example, um, so those, you know, rotor encoders don't, um, you can get good ones that are designed to last a long time, but uh, they there were like 400 different types on DigiKey that had under 100,000 cycles. You know, people who think that 50,000 is not a lot for a range switch, um, I, you know, are just wrong because these are these are mechanically um, a much different beasts to a simple rotor encoder or a toggle switch or something like that. They're vastly different beasts. Huge multi-gang things over big surface areas with, uh, you know, different pressure on the switch and the contacts as they spread across, you know, this much, you know, two inches of surface area or whatever. It's a big, it's a big difference. So I think I've heard, well, um, heard that uh, Bryman um, specify their meters to 25,000. 